Alrighty guys, welcome back to Culinary Camp Puga. I am so, so excited for you guys to join in. We did decide to go live a little bit earlier. I know I probably don't even have anybody watching, but for that same reason, I wanted to make sure that um, I posted this video just because of the fact that I know Super Bowl Sunday is coming um, and I don't want to interfere with anybody watching the game, moms or dads, um, watching the game and having to cook and getting all crazy. So I wanted to come on here and repost or pre-post the video of eclairs. Um, so I'm going to be making the eclairs now live with you. Um, you're welcome to join in and kind of just watch or you can join in a little bit later and watch. Um, so thank you, Terry. I appreciate it. Um, so you can go ahead and do either one. Um, I decided to do it a little bit earlier that way anybody who wants to do eclairs later on i um, usually we do our, our cooking live at six But I know the game is still gonna be on and I want to give everybody an opportunity to enjoy the game But also have the opportunity to do the eclairs as well. Um, I was gonna post just a pre video of me doing it but um, I figured I'd jump on here and um, answer any questions in case some moms get on and see that this is going on they can ask questions now. Um, this is gonna be a two part video. So uh, I will post this video when it's done. We will bake them and then I will go live again when we start decorating and stuff like that. So um, it's gonna take quite a while, um, probably about another hour. So the, the first part is a quick part. The baking is what takes the longest. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are doing French eclairs today. We're gonna do it with a vanilla pudding a filling and then we're gonna do a chocolate topping on top. So we're gonna be doing French eclairs and then we're gonna be doing the topping and the filling. Again, I know most of you are gonna watch later on. Um, so just know that um, this is on here. It's a pre-video for you guys so you can go back on here and do watch the eclairs. Um, I do want to remind you guys, those of you who um, decide to do, oops, decide to do um, Camp Puga today, just today for this single recipe alone, if you decide to embark on doing French eclairs with me today um, and you post your picture either today or tomorrow, um, you will enter in to win a free cutting board, culinary Camp Puga cutting board, a custom cutting board. This has the whisk that um, that is on the shirts itself. This is our custom cutting board. They're brand new. Um, so if you embark on a journey on doing uh, the class today, the um, the French eclairs, you can enter. It, we're going to be choosing three of the posted picture um, kids posting pictures of their eclairs. Three, you'll get. We're going to choose three winners to get this free cutting board. So later on in the day, if you decide to make these eclairs and post a picture, you posting a picture will automatically ent enter you into a three cutting board giveaway. Um, if you decide to embark on a journey on making eclairs with us today, so um, this is uh, and it's a really nice cutting board. It's probably about the size of a sheet of paper, and then it comes with a custom uh, whisk on it, uh, and then it's gonna have a little mountain. I haven't put the mountain on there yet, but it's gonna come with the, the whisk like that with a little mountain. These are custom culinary Camp Puga cutting boards, um, and they will also will be part of the store um, if you wanna purchase them. But we are gonna give three away to those kiddos who embark on the eclair journey and who get it done and post pictures. Whether it comes out or not, you post a picture trying to make your eclairs, you are entered to win one of the three free cutting boards we're gonna be giving um, away today or tomorrow. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are gonna be making eclairs. Again, this is a two-step process. Uh, again, I'm not, I just wanted to mention really quick, I'm not, um, trying to skip ahead. I'm just trying to pre-plan for Super Bowl Sunday. Um, I don't want to be doing this in a live stream while your dad or mom is trying to scream at the TV and the, the kiddos trying to cook. I want to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to um, do something. So um, we're going to, I'm going to use this video now. You can either cook later on in the day or tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the cutting board giveaway open in, up until Wednesday. That kind of gives you a chance to skip Sunday because of Super Bowl Sunday. And it gives you until Wednesday to post a picture of you trying to do some eclairs. Uh, remember, posting a picture will automatically get you into winning a free cutting board for, um, for the giveaway. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have all the ingredients here that I'm gonna be using. So I have four eggs. I already have them cut um, opened up. I did put them in separate containers because I'm gonna be putting them one at a time. 
I am not going to put them um, all at once and we'll get to that when we do. I have one cup of flour. I have two, um, two teaspoons of sugar and one half teaspoons of salt. I have a stick of butter. I have one cup of water. I have my uh, pot, it's a medium pot. And then I have, of course, my um, electric, what do you call this? An, an electric cooktop, which I, I use with you all here. I have a wooden spoon that I'm gonna be using to mix it up. And then um, that's about it. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is, usually I would pre-prep my pastry cream, um, but we are gonna be using vanilla pudding today just to make it easier for myself and for you kiddos doing it at home. Let's go ahead and start on our actual um, pastry, which is gonna be the eclair itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my stove top or griddle top. I'm gonna go ahead and add one cup of water. Just like that. And then I'm gonna be using half a stick of butter. Just like that. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna wait for this to boil. Um, once this starts to boil, then we'll move on to the next stop, the next portion of this. So one cup of water, half a stick of, one cup of water, half a stick of butter. And I have that at a, like a set as a five. We're gonna wait for this to come to a boil and then we'll move on to the next step. What you can go ahead and do in the meantime is measure out your one cup of flour and then your salt and your sugar. All of your drying ingredients can go into one bowl. And then you can go ahead and mix that up all together. Another quick tool that you can use, um, and I'm, I'm seeing some parents on here who um, are possibly going to be doing the live with us later on. Um, so, oh, memory, I was like, what? Memories. Um, thank you, Carlos. Yes, memories, culinary school. Um, so uh, for those of you parents who decided to join, just know that I'm doing it now instead of later. That way you can go on later on and um, watch the live because of Super Bowl. I don't want to interfere with anybody watching the game. Um, it gives you guys an opportunity to kind of focus on the kid or your kiddos and not the game or the game and not the kiddos. So you don't have to be doing two different things at once. Those parents who, um, who just joined in know that if you post a picture of your kiddo making the Eclair's recipe, you enter to win one out of the three cut custom cutting boards that we will be giving away. This is our Culinary Camp custom cutting boards. They're gonna come with a custom whisk on top. Um, if you post a picture, you automatically enter to win one of the three free cutting boards that we will be giving away. It's new merchandise coming out, new cutting boards. Um, so yeah, so just parents know I'm not trying to do this right away and you have to run and try to do it now. I'm doing it for the Super Bowl. So parents, if you wanna watch the Super Bowl, you have plans doing something with the Super Bowl diligently, um, you have time to go back and make the eclairs later on. But I wanted to do it live in case parents come on here and ask questions. Yes, we are still available for questions now, parents. Um, I know this one seems like a, might seem like a hard journey. Um, eclairs is not so hard. I'm gonna say it's probably one of the easiest pastries to do. Um, so I would encourage everyone to do it. Um, again, posting a picture will enter you to win one of the three cutting boards, uh, but we still are accepting questions now. Parents, if you wanna log on, if you're on right now, you can ask questions, anything you have. Um, if you need something to pre-prep, ask now. It's one of those, do I need this? Yes, no, I can let you know. Um, you will be needing a Ziploc bag. I did not mention that in the description. This is gonna be your piping bag. Um, yeah, but if you have questions, please please feel free to um, ask questions now. 
Um, if you plan on doing this later, I hope you do again. You enter to the giveaway is by posting a picture. You get uh, one of our new merchandise items, which is gonna be a custom culinary Camp Puga cutting board. Um, so yeah. All right, so we have this heating up already. Again, it's one cup of water to half a stick of butter. We're gonna make sure that uh, boils. We're gonna let it all boil up. We're gonna make sure your butter kind of melts down into your water. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and add our flour mixture. So this is one cup of flour, two teaspoons of sugar, and half a teaspoon of salt. I went ahead and mixed all of my dry ingredients together. Now that I have my water and butter boiling, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and put in my dry ingredients. Just like that. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to stir this up and it's gonna turn into a ball. That's what you're looking for. You're gonna turn it into a ball. I'll show you right now in a second. Let me just incorporate all of it before it burns. All right, this is what you want. You want a ball. You're gonna cook this for one to two minutes, just stirring like, like this. What you're trying to do is you're gonna cook all the flour out of the water mixture, just like this. So you're gonna be stirring it in that ball, just like this, on top of the stove, still cooking, for one to two minutes. It's gonna be a ball, that's what you're looking for. That ball is fine. You're just gonna to wanna to be mixing it around. What you're doing is you're cooking the flour out of the dough. Just like that. So again, this is what you're looking for. It's a nice little dough like that. One to two minutes, you're gonna be cooking it on top of your stove. And the reason you don't want to stop mixing it is because you don't want it to let it set and then it'll burn. You don't want that. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna turn off my stove top. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna let this set just for a little bit, probably about a minute. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow my flour dough here to kind of um, cool down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add my eggs. You're gonna wanna make sure you cool your flour mixture down just enough, because if you put your eggs in right, as soon as you take it out of your stove, I mean, right out of your cooktop, you're gonna curdle your eggs. You don't want to cook your eggs right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of off the, sto off the stove top, I'm gonna kind of mix it up again. I need to cool it down before I add my eggs. Again, I have four separate eggs here because I do not want to add my eggs in all at once. I wanna add them in one at a time. And the reason for that is because you're looking for the appropriate texture of your eclair pastry. So one at a time, sometimes it may take three eggs to get the perfect consistency, sometimes it might take four eggs. It sh for this amount of recipe, it should not take more than four eggs. Four eggs would be your maximum. All right, so about a minute or two, I'm just moving it around, kind of trying to cool it down a little bit. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and add my first egg. As soon as I add my first egg, you're gonna wanna start mixing. It's gonna look kind of like it's separating. It kind of looks really weird, kind of weird looking. Um, but you're gonna wanna keep mixing it and mixing it and mixing it. And you're gonna add a second egg and then a third egg. Um, don't stop mixing it. So parents, you're gonna wanna either do the mixing and your kiddo's gonna wanna throw the egg in or vice versa because you're never gonna wanna stop mixing and, and then you're gonna be adding your eggs a little at a time. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna add one egg 
And I'm gonna start mixing now before it starts to curdle. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna look kind of chunky, kind of like, I don't know how to describe this mashed look. Mashed potatoes. Not, well, yes, mashed potatoes, but um, it's like very, it kind of breaks up really weird. But you're gonna wanna keep mixing because it's gonna end up turning into like a, a real pastry. Keep mixing, it's gonna break up. It's gonna look like it's not done. It's gonna look really funky. Remember, if you stop mixing, you're gonna get curdling. There we go. Oh, my hand's getting tired. Next egg. You can also use a hand mixer if you would like. You don't have to just do it by hand. If you have a hand mixer with you, you can go ahead and use a hand mixer. It makes it a lot easier. Let me scrape all this off. Keep mixing. Woo, I'm tired. There we go. One more egg. Every time you add a new egg, it's gonna look like that same consistency that you got at the beginning. Even though you just thought to yourself, oh, I just got it. You need to add every single egg and it's gonna do the same exact thing where it's gonna clump up kind of weird looking uh, every single time. But then if you keep mixing it, it'll eventually even out. Again, for those of you parents who are deciding to do this, you can use a hand mixer. You don't have to do it by hand like this. It is a lot, 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 lot easier if you do it with a hand mixer. But I wanted to make sure I show, in case you don't have a hand mixer, you can do it by hand. Ugh. Okay, I need one more egg. My hand's getting tired. Keep doing the same thing. It's gonna clump up kind of gross looking. Scrape the sides. Keep going. Getting tired on that hand. And we are there. Got a nice consistency. You're gonna to wanna to keep mixing it for another minute or two until you have everything well incorporated. You have a really nice dough now is what you're looking for. It's not so thick anymore, you have a nice dough. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and get our Ziploc bag. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Ziploc bag. There's two ways you can do this. You can either flip your bag upside down, like this, kind of over your hand, and then you can kind of scoop it, and then you can kind of put your hand like this. You put your spoon in there, and then you put it like that, and then you kind of peel off your spoon. Or you can do the cut method, which the cup method is you would put your bag inside of the cup like this. Once to put your inside the bag like this, and then you're gonna fold it over like this, and you're gonna kind of squeeze the inside of the bag. And the same re thing, you're gonna go ahead and scoop it like this, and then just put it in your cup, and then kind of gather it like that. I like to use my hand because I can use, thank you, Lulu. Um, you can use your hand to kind of peel off 
of the batter from the spoon. Before I do that though, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to set my oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit to start preheating for my eclairs. All right, so I'm gonna start preheating my oven at 400 degrees, and let's go ahead and stick this batter inside of my bags. And I'm making a mess already. All right. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna push all of my batter onto one corner. And then I'm gonna go ahead and snip aside. Before I do that, though, let me go ahead and move everything aside so that I can show you how we're gonna do this. Remember, those of you who post pictures today, thank you, Susie. Um, those of you who post pictures of today's Eclair's recipe will enter to win one out of the three new Chef Culinary Cap Puga cutting boards. They're new cutting boards that are coming out on our merchandise. Um, you will enter to win if you decide to do the Eclair's today. A picture will value one entry into getting your free Eclair. So we'll be giving away three of these cutting boards today or by Wednesday. All right, so I have my pastry here, which is, it came out great. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Before I cut this dough, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna show you a method that I learned in culinary school that you can learn also. So what you can go ahead and do is you can grab yourself, I don't have a ruler with me, but you can go ahead and grab a ruler. And on that ruler, what you can do is if you have your parchment paper, which, which is where you're gonna put your, um, cream cream puffs, your eclairs, you can measure out three inches or four. Remember I told you a long time ago, those of you old campers, that one little uh, measurement of your um, index finger, one of your one of your knuckle to knuckles thing is an inch. You can also use a measuring tape if you have one, dads, this is where dads can kind of step in and help. You can me measure out four inches, um, and then you're gonna go ahead and with a pen, a pencil or a marker, you're gonna measure out four inches just like that on your paper. And you can go ahead and do them probably about two to two to three inches apart, just like that. You're gonna measure out four inches, four inches. Now this is just an extra step. You don't have to actually do this. What this is gonna do is this is gonna help you guide on how long all of your eclairs are. If you want to go ahead and measure them out all exactly the way to be the exact same thing, the way, wherever you um, marked it out, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and flip your paper over and then you're gonna see your markings on your parchment paper. So you can use that as a guide to make all your eclairs the exact same length. Um, that's a cool thing if you want to make them really uniform that makes a really pretty presentation uh, Those of you campers who are starting to do this and really enjoying cooking This is a first step into the culinary world is learning uniformity with all of your recipes So that's a quick step if not you can go ahead and just do them however you please you can also do cream puffs where you just pu um, type a bunch of um, Dots not a bunch but a good size quarter size dot and then itself, and, it, and the same thing in itself, it makes a cream puff. So a cream puff would just be a little cylinder in itself, and a clear would be a long, most likely three to four inches. So I have my four inches. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eclairs that I'm going to be doing first. Let me go ahead and grab some scissors. Or you know what, I don't need scissors. I can do it with this. Can I borrow this little cutting board, please? So what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is either, if you don't have scissors, most of you have scissors on you. I don't have them in front of me, so I'm not gonna use them. I'm gonna use a paring knife and a cutting board, and then I'm just gonna slit the edge of 
the, ba the bag itself so I can get a nice little tip here. Put that to the side. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pipe out all of these eight four inch eclairs with my little bag here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna squeeze my bag and then I'm gonna pull it down just like this up until I get to my four inches. Once I get to my four inches, I'm gonna release the pressure of the bag and then I'm gonna pull the bag forward like that and it's gonna create a little lip at the end. I'm gonna do that for all every single one of my eclairs. So I'm gonna squeeze my bag once I get to my four inch, I'm gonna pull it off and then I'm gonna get that little lip. You can kind of see the little lip on the edge on every single one. That's okay, we're gonna fix that right now before they go into the oven. So let's go ahead and do another one. We're gonna squeeze your bag. And then once you get to the end of the measurement, you're gonna pull up. You're gonna squeeze your bag like this. Once you get to the edge, you're gonna pull up. And then let's go do the other four that we have to do. So I'm gonna pipe that. I'm gonna squeeze up, let it go. Another four inch. Just like that. It's okay if you grow the lip like that. It's okay, we're gonna go ahead and fix that in a second. We're gonna do another one. Just like that. And another one, just like that. So now we have eight eclairs here. What you're gonna go ahead and do before you stick it into the oven, I'm gonna actually make some more before I stick them into the oven, but before I do that, I'm gonna get a little bit of water in a cup. I'm gonna use, how big do you wanna do the hole on the bag? You're gonna probably do about a half an inch. You're gonna cut off the edge of the bag. Um, you can do it bigger or smaller. It's depending on how you want your eclairs to look. These are gonna puff up a good size. If you do a bigger hole, you're gonna get a bigger eclair. If you do a smaller hole, you're gonna get a smaller eclair. Um, it's just depending on what you want to do and how big or small you want your eclairs to look. I did about half an inch off the edge, the corner of the bag. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna dip my finger in a little bit of cold water and I'm gonna use my finger to press down the edge of the little lip I made for each eclair. This is gonna make sure that it doesn't stay up just like that and it doesn't bake that way and then you're gonna have, you're gonna mess up your uniformity of your eclair. You're gonna just pat it down with your wet finger and it's gonna kind of mold back into the eclair itself. Just like that. And just like that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put these aside right here and I'm gonna grab another uh, parchment and I'm gonna use the rest of this and I'm gonna show you how you can make some cream puffs as well. Mm. So same thing, I'm gonna grab a little bit of parchment. Okay, just like that. Now we're gonna do some cream puffs if you wanna do cream puffs and not eclairs. Cream puffs are gonna be the same thing. You're gonna make a little ball like that and then you're gonna stop pressure and then you're gonna kinda circle around like that and you're gonna get a little dollop just like that. It's about an inch high and then it's about the size of a dollar quarter size. I'm gonna do another one, circle it out. Circling it out is just gonna take off the tail of it. Just like that. Let me pull this in a little bit closer. Maybe you can see better. Hold on. Let's do this together. Hopefully I can do it in this way. So you're gonna pull the, you're gonna press it just like that. You're, you're gonna dollar size quarter like that and you're gonna release the bag and then you're gonna circle your bag like this so you can pull off your batter. Same thing, you're gonna do another one like this. You're gonna stop and then you're gonna circle like that so you can release the batter. Let's do it one more time like this. Circle it up. Again, oh, there we go. Again, you can do these all different, different kinds of shapes and sizes. It's depending on whatever you feel like doing. Um, I'm gonna do three bigger ones here, longer ones. Um, so you can do whatever you like. 
Just remember, the longer you make it, the flimsier it's gonna be. So you're not gonna get an actual eclair or a cream puff out of it. At this point, you're just having fun trying new things. Again, the bigger you go, the larger the cream puff or the eclair is going to grow. Again, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna grab a little bit of water and I'm gonna push down my edges. Now, if you want to just leave the little pico standing up, you're more than welcome to. The only thing with that is it's gonna bake that way and then you might get that little pico just in itself to burn and you don't wanna risk the burn because you don't wanna risk the flavor transferring over to your eclairs. So just pat, take a few minutes to pat it down so you don't have to worry about the burning. Just like that. So I have some really long eclairs on one side, I have some cream puffs here, and then I have some regular eclairs on this sheet. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put them into the oven. I'm gonna have my little cheat sheet here. I'm gonna put that in the oven for 15 minutes at 400 degrees. And once the 15 minutes are up, you're gonna set your timer. And then once it rings at 15 minutes, you're gonna lower your, your temperature on your oven to 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. After the 20, 25 minutes are done, you're gonna turn off your oven, you're gonna open your oven, and you're gonna let your eclairs cool down with your oven. So let me repeat that again, because I know we'll have questions, but I wanna make sure, and I'll add it um, into the comments when I post the video. Uh, so we're gonna do 400 degrees for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes ring, you're gonna lower your temperature to 350 degrees. For 20 to 25 minutes, you're gonna be looking for a nice color um, and that they're nice and spongy, they haven't really grown anymore. And then once you're, let's say 22 minutes, let's put it at 22 minutes, the halfway mark. Once your 22 minutes have rain, you're gonna turn off your oven and open your oven and let the, everything cool down. Your oven's gonna cool down and your eclairs are gonna cool down all together. So what you're looking for is the 400 degrees is what's, it's gonna puff up and it's gonna turn the nice golden brown. The remaining 350 degrees for 22 minutes is gonna cook the inside of the eclair. And then when you let it set in the oven, what it's gonna do is it's gonna let out all the rest of the steam from the inside. So it's a three cooking process in your oven. So remember it's 400 degrees at 15 minutes, 350 at 22 minutes, and 15 minutes to let them cool down. I wanna make sure I reiterate those times, that way you can always go back and make sure you put them at the right time since this video will be posted. I'm gonna go ahead and stick them into the oven, follow that process, and then I'm gonna come back live in about 30, 40, 50, probably about an hour, so that we can go ahead and chocolate them together and, and fill them up. So I don't wanna wait here another hour and, and cook them together. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll come back live when they are ready so you can see exactly what they look like. So my oven just rang 400 degrees. It's time to stick them in for those 15 minutes and then we'll bring it down to 350 for 22 minutes. There you go, perfect. Thank you, Melissa, for putting that in the comments. I appreciate it. Um, those are the exact times that you will be doing and I will add them into the comments um, that way you can have them as well. So let's go ahead and stick these into the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and let you go and we'll be back in just about an hour. See you guys. Can you take it out, please? Finish. Alrighty guys, we are back about 45, 50 minutes later. We have our eclairs. They look phenomenal. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful eclairs. We have our good cream puffs. I already did one here just so we have a pre one. So the little ones we made were a little bit too little and that's okay, I'm glad this happened. Um, you have a good eclair still, so it's not like you completely charred them all. Um, that uh, time that I did because of the size that they are, you're gonna wanna check it. You don't wanna do it too, um, we didn't do it for the whole 22 minutes at the second part. We did it up to about eight minutes shy of it. So about 17 minutes is what we did. Um, and then we did these bigger ones and the time was still better on there, so they look great. Um, I suggest, now, now I'm gonna suggest 
going a little bit bigger on your eclairs that just so you can get a better um, result out of it. Um, so I would do a bigger eclair. Let me show you here, let me pull it off. Beautiful, beautiful eclair. You can do it like that. You have your cream puffs here as well. Beautiful color, look at the color on the bottom. So let's go ahead and fill these eclairs and cream puffs. So I'm gonna start with a cream puff because I already did one here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do, my doggy decided to come inside and now he's crying. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I have my cream puff here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm gonna poke a hole on the bottom. So you can use a knife, you can use a pen, you can use the back of a wooden spoon. And you're gonna wanna make a hole on the bottom. And what you're gonna end up finding out is the inside of your cream puff is hollow. That's exactly what you want. You want it to be hollow. No, you're behind this way. It's freezing. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, you're gonna want, it, it's, your cream puff should be hollow. You're not gonna wanna really worry about taking out anything when you poke it in. And then you're gonna wanna put your vanilla pudding inside of a bag, just like we did with the other ones. And then you can go ahead and fill that. Just like that. I'm gonna clean it off so I have a cream filled at, on the bottom. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm gonna grab my chocolate. I have my chocolate here, and then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna dip the end of it here into my chocolate, and me this way. And then I have a chocolate topping with the cream filled just like that. These big ones, unfortunately, won't fit into my chocolate. But what I can do with these big ones is, can you give me a small ziplock, please? Absolutely. What I'm gonna go ahead and do with my big one is I am going to still, I'm gonna fill it. So I'm gonna make two, three insert holes like this. So I have three openings. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my bag here and I'm gonna fill the openings there. Just like that. So I have my cream puff, it's filled like that. I'm gonna put this on the side here just like this. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am going to put some chocolate. Shh. You have to go outside with it. Or not. Sorry, my dog's deciding to go crazy. Okay, what you're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put some chocolate in here. He's on no. Just like that. And then I'm gonna cut off the edge. Like that. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna drizzle. Let me move this out of the way. I am going to drizzle the top of this. Just like that. So in case your cream puff, I have smaller ones here. These little ones here. They not, they're not too big that I can, I can uh, fill them with, but what I can do with this one is I can go ahead and cut it in half. Well, it kind of broke on me. me. Grab another one. They all keep breaking. If they're too small, they're gonna end up breaking. So that's why we wanted to go for a bigger size. Let me do it on this one. So I have a, this is your eclair. If it's too small to get any piping inside, it's okay. What you can go ahead and do is you can go ahead and open it up. Just like that. So you open it up completely in case you can't fill it. And then what you can go ahead and do is you can Fill it now that it's open. Just like that. 
And then you have your cream puff filled like that. And then you can go ahead and do the drizzle again. Just like that. So let's go ahead and do a cream puff again, just together. We're gonna go ahead and take out the center. Just like that. I'm gonna fill it with my cream. And I'm gonna dip it in my chocolate. Just like that. And there you go, guys. You have some French eclairs, a simple, quick recipe. I hope you guys really enjoy this. I wanted to go live really quick again to show you that next step on how to decorate and fill your eclairs. Um, if you have any questions, I will be on the group page at six o'clock. Those of you who are gonna embark on the journey at doing it at six. Um, other than that, you guys stay safe, enjoy the Super Bowl, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one, guys.